Right, I'm charging it for the first time. I'm a, I'm a bit concerned. The only power supply I've got uh, free is that one which I've adjusted. Well, it was originally 75.6 volts and I was using it at 84 volts. If you want to know how to adjust those things, I'll leave a link in the description. Now, this is a 4 amp. Is it a 4 amp output? Yeah, it's a 4 amp output. As per that, which won't focus, that's running at 3.8 amps. Now I'm a bit concerned because it's running off this charge lead. Which isn't getting warm. I know the internals are fine, but I mean I'm running pumping 4 amps through that. I was a bit worried, but it does seem to be handling it. There's no other wires, nothing's getting hot. It's not even getting warm to be honest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that running. Uh, I've got to charge it anyway. Because the cells are at 3.4 volts, uh, which isn't very good. I want to go into 3.7. Uh, to around the storage voltage just so as I can I can leave it because I have been testing it quite a lot This is the original light which I don't know if you can see uh, Focus One of them as in that one there has popped I don't know if it's a current limiting thing. I mean, there's no resistors on this. It must have a current limiting uh, resistor built into the controller that was originally on there. Anyway, I put 12 volts into it and it's popped. So, I've got a light off my other bike. Uh, I've ground this down as close as I can possibly get it because oh, bollocks, I need to fit it in there. Now, it don't fit. I can't take any more off it. Is that the button? Yes. I can't take any more off it and it's not going to fit, especially with this over the top. Because that fits there. Oh, f <laughs> that fits there like that. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put it there. And so as the lights actually go through and then I can seal all this up. Now, obviously I need to do the holes in the right place. So I've cleaned that off. I've got myself some blue tack here which I'm going to make bigger than I need to as in stretch it out sort of the right size. Then I'm what, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some 3-in-1 oil and I'm going to rub it over the top here and then I'm going to place that exactly in the right place. <laughs> Which is that, oh bollocks, it's the wrong way up. Right, it's now in the right place. So I'm going to push down on that, nice and firmly, all over. And then I'm going to go around and make sure that this, as much as I can, is stuck onto there. That's stuck onto there, I'm going to make sure it's pushed in again. And then... That's where I've got to cut the holes. As you can see, nice indents. So I've got to drill all those holes out and then to the, to the exact size and then I can poke that through. The holes are cut and I'm hoping and praying that this actually fits. Perfect. And now I might have to, I might have to trim the sides off this, but yeah, I've, got, I've just got to trim a piece off the sides off that bit just to make that fit perfectly in there and then there's your lights so this is actually a side light and a brake light incorporated I've just found out that this has got red and amber lights I don't know if you can actually see the middle ones here are red and these are amber and it's also got a number plate light which I think I'm going to leave that on actually <laughs> the lighting's not very brilliant tough uh, this is the front suspension. I've taken the wheel off, which used to go there, roughly. 
Now to get the front wheel off, or the front tyre, which is there, you have to uh, deflate it and then you have to compress it to get it past the drum brake piece and then it slots out the bottom. Now there's a couple of problems with this is it's too loose and it's too tight. It's too tight at the top and it's too loose at the bottom. Now, I've already undone this so I can just pull that one out. Now you can see that this shock should be free and it's not but it should be free and this one here this is done up this is too way too loose it's got too much end float on it now you've got one or two choices you either put another spacer in the back like there is actually a spacer in there which you can't see because this isn't going to focus there is a spacer in there or you can file some off the front if I undo that you pull that off. If you file a piece off this here and then you put it back on, is there a bearing in that? There's no oh there is, it's actually there's a bearing in it. So that can be tight on there. Isn't that defeating the object of the bearing? Oh my god, they've actually defeated the object of the bearing, look. They've put that there, so when that clamps, that just clamps the bearing solid. That's a bit of a loose fit on there anyway, but, but that should be a fully... Which it is, it should be a fully working bearing. So I'm going to seal that up. Right, to make that work I'll need a smaller washer. Not one that fits over the whole bloody thing and clamps the whole lot in place. That might be why they've loosened it up actually, <laughs> because they've got it wrong. So I need a washer that size and only to cover the middle piece. The, out the outer one's fine, look. It's just that, in that one there. Why oh, ain't that weird? They've got a full bloody bearing in that. I don't get it. Right, I'm going to find a washer. What I've done is, I've taken these apart. Um, what you've got to do is independently check the joints. You can't just uh, adjust them and then think that's okay and then put it all back together. You have to independently check them, whereby if I undo this one, completely take it apart like this one is here, I work on this joint here, and then I take this one off and I fit the bottom joint on and I work on that to make sure it's not loose obviously but it can't be bloody tight like that um, what I've done is the centre shaft which is stainless steel which goes obviously in the middle of that what I've had to do is get it in the drill and file some down then get some emery cloth on it make it nice, nice and smooth this is supposed to rotate in the top thing the eyelet whatever it's called these things, these plastic pieces here are purely to stop it from moving from side to side. So you've got to make sure that this actually runs freely in there and obviously grease it up afterwards. Um, but also I've had to shave a bit off these plastic pieces because these were binding and stopping it from moving. So what I've done is I've taken off the bottom, I've worked on the top to make sure it's nice and free like this one isn't. That is so tight on there. And then I've taken off the top and I've worked on the bottom bit and I've done that. Now also, this piece here, I've put a spacer on the back to pull it out. There's no, there's no side movement, no lateral movement on it at all now. So that's all done and it's beautiful and free. So all the suspension on this side, there it is, all the suspension on this side is lovely and free now. So I've got to work on the other side and then we're all done and it can all go back together. Just so I can show you on this one, now here's the centre bush, this is the piece that pivots. Uh, that's nice and free. Now this was the same on the other uh, the other suspension that I had on it, the original one which is literally just a spring. So that sits on there and then that bit goes on the top of there and then the bolt goes through it and it's all clamped together. So what happens is, is these plastic, um, 
what are they, washers I suppose to stop it moving those were clamping up against this and basically stopping it from moving and that is how it's supposed to be so what I've got to do is um, here's another one of those bushes, I put one of those in the drill and then I put that over the top like that and I get some memory cloth and then I just run it over the top until it's the right thickness to actually sit on there without it binding. So now I've loosened it off it's not loose loose but it's not tight tight it just has to be about right you know what I mean there's no movement in there so that's, that's just perfect now so now I've got to take the top off and I've got to move on to the bottom and then I can button it all up sorry I've got the pivot point to do as well and then I can button it all up and I know down well all of the suspension is perfectly free I've had the uh, what are they called? grips, switch gear throttle I've had the uh, throttle and switch gear delivered this is nice this is nice. Where's that go? That one goes on there. That's plastic. Yes. That's metal which goes on there. And that one there. That's plastic again. And that's metal. It's actually got a holder for the mirror as well. And that goes on there. And then that goes onto the bar. So we've got the lights, I don't know if that's momentary or, or switched because it doesn't actually stay indented. I'll have to work that out, the same as these. One, two and three speed positions. Duh, don't know. Oh, I presume that's for reverse. Um, high beam, low beam, hazard warning, so that's got to be... That can't be momentary. Left and turn, left and right turn, which aren't, they're not cancelling. You just literally have to self, they're not self cancelling or, no, they wouldn't be self cancelling on a bike. Usually you press the button in the middle and they cancel, but they don't on these. You physically have to switch it. But doesn't matter. Horn and P for park or piss off. Yes. The only thing with these is they're made for pre production pre-production already produced produced made already made what oh, I don't know they've got a nipple on them so I've got to grind, grind the nipple off um, unless I actually drill something into the bars and I'm not going to do that so I'm going to grind that off and then we can fit them something I've just noticed I don't know if people remember but look who the sender is. <laughs> Evidently they don't remember me. <laughs>